Is it possible that rice is bad? Ice cream. Is it possible? It is kind of swollen. Yeah, maybe, maybe icing your injury delays what your body naturally does. Is that better? I think your body probably knows what it's doing. Possibly? I don't know. Hi, my name's Kurt. I'm a physical therapist by trade, but a realist at heart. And today's reality is that sometimes we have to rethink what is the accepted norm? What is normal? What you're supposed to do? What are you supposed to do after an injury? After an ankle sprain? Ice it. Take some ibuprofen. Rest it. Rest, ice, compression, elevation. Maybe we have to rethink. But we will see. Let's document how and what my body does today. That one hurt pretty good. Not saying you shouldn't do ice. Just walked on uneven ground to pick this up. And that hurt, which reminded me to document what I'm feeling. I want to pose a different question to you that says, do we ice to heal faster or do we ice to feel better? Healing versus feeling. But it's just good to document what you're feeling so you can recognize that you have, have, have made significant progress. Because your brain forgets, forgets what it used to feel. We're gonna use my ankle. <laughs> Sorry, I have a weak stomach. Uh, it's about six hours later and it is still hurts, but it definitely is a lot different than what I expected. And that's my experiment today. No ice, load it, move it, tell my body it's okay. Safety. <laughs> Now, I don't want to talk about ankle sprains, but I do want to highlight, make sure whatever's injured isn't severely injured, broken, whatever. Auto ankle rolls, I'll make a short right up there. Walking through how to assess if your ankle's broken if you have a hard ankle. We need to make sure you're not severely hurt. We need to make sure it's just tissue damage, muscle, ligament, nerve. I don't really care too much in the beginning. It's all loaded. It's all loaded the same in the beginning. But we need to make sure it's not a really bad injury. Also, like, uh... Can you see me now? There it is. Also, this is like not medical advice. So do your diligence, like do your job, be a good student. I just want to present different options for you other than the one option. There's a lot more that we can do than the one thing. It's just presenting, presenting more options for you. Cool, 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 cool. cool. I need to relook at the video, but I think this was the culprit. That's what, like an inch, maybe an inch and a half drop. What I've learned, it's a 25 minute walk. Pain is significantly reduced. Uh, safety, 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 safety. That's what the brain likes. So I feel like the first thing that we need to look at is what does your body do when it's cold? What happens when you put ice on an injury? And then we'll look at what does your body at naturally do when it gets injured? What is your, it's the immune system. What does your immune system do when it notices trauma? And then how? How does ice maybe limit that? Ready? Welcome to the channel. Appreciate you. Let's go. I've got an errand to run and I got a contradictory example to tell you about. If I take this piece of meat and I take it out of the fridge, is it gonna go bad? Of course. The temperature with which that meat sits dictates how fast bacteria grows, how fast the body of that meat breaks down. Now if I keep it in the fridge, they stay longer, right? It takes a longer for them to break down. And so now I put the meat in the freezer, it lasts forever, right? Let's put this back to where it's supposed to go. So you may be thinking, well yeah, Kurt, I want my body to last forever, so let's keep it in a freezer. This is why it's a contradictory example. Wait, what do I actually need here? This is why it's a contradictory example, because your body is alive. That cow is dead. I'm sorry, cow, I love you. So if I put you in the freezer, are you gonna last as long as the, the ribeye steak? If I put you in the fridge, will you last longer than if you were in the freezer? Yeah, it sounds nice, it's hot. But if you stay there forever, no, you're gonna warm up and give, give me a jacket, so keep me warm in order to keep my tissues alive. So that begs the question of what happens. I'm trying to think about what do I actually need. I don't need chocolate. So then that begins to beg the question of what does your body do when it's in cold versus when it's in hot? Brings the blood flow to your heart, brain, essential organs when it's cold. Sends that blood away to your appendages to try to get cold, to try to get rid of heat. So it's trying to preserve 
itself, not the appendages when it's cold, then why do I want to put something cold on something that needs health, that needs healing? Why is there always the nicest light in the beer and wine section? This is nice. Body needs blood. When you put ice on it, it reduces blood. That's the question we're trying to pose. So your body's supposed to swell. Like, why, why would it naturally do that? And maybe that restriction that we're having is just uh, fear. Something that we'll definitely talk about. What is pain? Why does our body create it? Why do we feel it? What do we do about that? Do you ever wonder what the best hamstring stretch is? So when blood rushes to an area, it brings all the nutrients. Nutrients. There's a reason why you faint when your brain doesn't have blood. It doesn't have nutrients. So if you if you restrict if you restrict all it'll be really dark. If you restrict all the blood flow, how does the place get it's injured heal? If there's no blood flow. It's, it's a very simple question. <laughs> sounds so sounds so elementary when I put it that way. But that really is the question that I'm wondering. So ice makes our tissues cold, which reduces blood flow. Duh. But I really just want to begin to frame it in the context that blood brings healing. And what specifically does blood bring? Your immune system. So your immune system is a bunch of stuff. And it's not just when you... Could you hold this for me, please? Thanks. Your immune system's not just... Could you hold this for me too, please? Oh, we lost it. Your immune system is just not about when you get a cold or a virus or bacteria. When you when your tissue breaks down, your body sends stuff to it through blood to tell your brain what needs to happen there. It's good. It's normal. That's what's supposed to happen. Get it, bud. Get it. Oh. Blood brings the immune system. The immune system decides, what do I do with this stuff? We're just gonna call it stuff. We don't care too much about what it actually is. And within all this stuff, say hi to Bennett, is something called neutrophils. Very, 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 very basic understanding of neutrophils is that they eat stuff. Something called phagocytosis. Cytosis is like the breaking down of cells. Osis is like things breaking down, I think. If I remember correctly, should have done some research. Phagocytosis, and when they begin to phagocyte, eat things, when they begin to eat things, they put little trackers on them, which tells the second part of the immune system that do phagocytosis. If someone vomited over there, took it out of frame. I'm making sure my dog doesn't eat it, so that's why I'm checking that. The second part of this phagocytic, is that a word, cycle, something called macrophages. What macrophages do, you ready? Get it. Get it. what macrophages do is complete the phagocytosis. They fully encapsulate what is deemed to be threatening, foreign, not supposed to be there, or too much of something, too much of even a good thing that your immune system has thereby tracked. What's really important about phagocytosis or the macrophages, I should say, is they release these factors. These factors are determined to say, grow, <laughs> pretty much. Insulin growth factor one. So let's just say, let's say we bend this bone and then that muscle and that ligament that keeps the muscle the bone taut is stretched too much and releases traumatic things. Your brain comes in your, your brain that says, hey guys, immune system, send stuff to this injury to tell me what's going on. The neutrophils come in and they say, oh, I can identify, neutrophil, I can identify that this stuff is bad, so I'm gonna. And then the macrophages come in, big boy, big boy, macrophages come in and they say, Oh. 
and it poops out this little IGF-1, insulin growth factor one. And what IGF-1 does, well, He says, Dad, I want to move. Thanks for holding that. Let's go. Yeah. Yeah. There he goes. Again, this is very, 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 very basic. More complicated than I should say anyway. What IGF-1 does is takes that process of pro-inflammation and then makes it anti-inflammation. In order for that process to bridge from yes, inflame this area to no, stop inflaming this area. Sorry, you hit the ground because you're on a six foot tripod, so I'm holding you up. In order for that bridge from pro-inflammation to say yes, inflame this area, to no, don't inflame this area, the macrophages have to encapsulate that area and then poop out that little IGF-1. There's more that goes into it, which just again, it's basic. Which says to the body, I don't need as much blood here. I need to now heal this area, reduce swelling. Now, of course there's a caveat that says, of course there's a caveat that says too much swelling is bad. Too much of anything is bad, of course, right? We're moving again. So there's a caveat to everything. That's why medicine is hard. I'm gonna lower you a little bit. That's why medicine is hard because you can explain anything. How do you begin to trust anybody? Because you can explain anything with any sort of theory. It's all theories. And even research is theories because who pays for the research? Tangent. If we stunt the blood from coming to the area, that process never turns on. That smart contract never activates. That pathway never opens. So then the body's gonna say, keep inflaming it, keep inflaming it. I notice trauma, I notice trauma. And don't give me, don't even get me into the, the, the pathway of neuroscience of understanding the relationship you have with putting weight on this ankle. But again, that's not saying that there's some, I've lost my dog. That's not saying that there's something wrong with my ankle. That's my brain saying, be careful, wait. Ah, I don't really know what to do, so I'm gonna send pain. It's the basics of what your body does. Let me just cover them. Is that cover enough? That's the basics of what your body does day one, day two, when there is an injury. And the process that's really important for your body to go through, it has to activate that process, has to activate that contract to say, I completed that. Now I can move on to the anti-inflammatory stuff. It's almost dinner time, so I should probably get home. I have to cut a lot of this out, because that's 12 minutes. Oh man, that's probably like eight minutes. I've already talked. So there to be another video. I should probably cut out the pain science. <laughs> First try. Uh, how do they slide? <laughs> no, I didn't just kick it over <laughs> at the six at the six yard box. <laughs> So it's doing 100%. He's not listening today. I think I can hit him or come close to hitting. I don't actually hit my, I don't hit my dogs. Promise. Just a good target. So now that we understand a little bit about how the immune response works, I, I want to be clear that I have no issue with ice. Ice is great. Merely bringing into question the timing of the ice, specifically the acuity of injuries. What do we do? So acuity means time frame. So the short term thing that we do when we get injured, should it be ice? Or should we let the body naturally do its thing? There's, there's arguments for and against everything in today's world. Hopefully you understand a little bit about how that immune response happens. And then we can have a better educated decision about what we have to do. Because I don't want to make you not ice and then you use it and then you develop this pain relationship with using it. But I also want to cause in the question another video that I'll talk about eventually. Subscribe if you want to know more about it. When we ice, we're also telling our brain something is wrong. But what if nothing is wrong? 
but then we're icing all this time because it feels good, but we're also telling our brain that something must be wrong. Because pain is a behavioral changer. It's not trying to say that there's something damaged. Pain does not mean damage. Pain means, hey, like, look out. Maybe have some caution. Something might be up, but I don't know if something's up. I'm just, maybe there is. Which is how we can have pain when we watch someone do something. How we can have pain when we reflect on our injury 20 years ago and we can't remember what we had for breakfast, but we can remember how we threw out our disc or slipped a disc years ago. We can remember those things in our back, our knee, my ankle can start to flare up. It's a week later, eight days later, my ankle's great. But honestly, walking out of the house with my dog now, I'm really conscious to be in the middle because I don't want to experience that again. doesn't mean I'm scared of it, but I am more cognizant of it. That also means that I have to still continue to challenge that protective fear, that protective mechanism that my brain now has with that behavior when I go outside. So again, that's really complicated. Pain is amazing. I love it. We can talk about it eventually. But I do want to help you understand that I, I'm not trying to say use it, nothing's injured, and develop this bad relationship with pain. But I also want to help you understand that what we do to our body dictates what our body might start to feel. So then ice can start to mean something's injured. Ice can feel good while it's on, but then our brain can be like, oh, something must be injured because when I ice, I'm usually injured. So ice means injury. Not always true, it's complicated. I just wanna be really clear to help you guys understand that a little bit better. Yeah. I said who my name is, right? I'm always forget about saying my name is. My name is Kurt, I'm a physical therapist by trade. Um, what that means is that is what I do, but I'm a realist at heart. What that means is there's a lot more that we can do than rehab. There's a lot more to rehab than doing things. There's a lot more to healing than stretching, than massaging, than icing, than doing these things. The reality is we need to get a good relationship with our body, and that's through challenging it. I will see you guys soon. What's next? What's next on the docket? I've got a tonal review, that foot video, shoulder video coming, body hack video, pain video coming. I'll see you in one of those videos next. We'll see what future card is interested in that day. Bye!